Hello and welcome to Totally Tell Me, a weekly entertainment review podcast where we talk about movies, music, food, and fun. My name is Dominic McCreo and I am here with Laura Weinbach. Yoder. Sup, Laura? How's it going? Uh, pretty good. Good. How are you? Oh, uh, pretty good. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm good. I'm also good. Um, yeah. Stuffed up as as probably one could almost immediately garner. Um, to be honest, I, when you told me you were getting over a cold, I thought that could work. But then when I heard you, you sounded stuffed up. I'm but stuffed I was like, that's up. a bit too stuffed up for my taste. You know well, what I, mean? I always feel but like at the same time, I'm. Stu- I also am. Too. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Um, but I feel like there's a period of a cold where you sound a lot worse than you feel, and that's that is where I'm at. Like. I well, no, sound like true, I feel but... horrible, but I actually feel basically fine at this point. No, but you still sound contagious is the point. Right. I sound contagious, but in fact... You are, though, probably. Well, but in like, fact... Like, for example... <laughs> go ahead. No, go ahead. What are the facts? No, no. I don't know the facts per se, but I guess, you know, uh, the scuttlebutt going around is that 
one is only contagious. One is only contagious in those first couple days, right? Don't they say that? Like first couple days. They say that. That's some bunk ass shit right there. (laughs) (laughs) It's not true. I've looked it up. It's completely debunked. (laughs) Oh really? You are contagious as long as you're like spreading germs around. Like if you're still sniffling and sneezing and things along the lines of that, it is. As they say, contagious. <laughs> but I Or as they don't say. Um, I guess I, I don't. I asked the doctor. I asked the doctor. Really? So even well, if I'm like, you know, because I am funny. blowing my nose every once in a while, I will try and refrain on this show, but you know. So well, that like, would still be contagious. Coughing, if you coughed like right next to me, I might get it. Here's the thing. I normally <clears throat> wouldn't really be that, uh, I wouldn't care that much about it, but <laughs> I myself have been sick for the last since mm-hmm. d- before December, and some of the people here might, will be know about this from the chicken coop. Hello, Cooper. How are you? Welcome. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, I seriously, I had one cold right mm-hmm. before Christmas, and that lasted all the way until, like, post-New Year's Day. Mm-hmm. And then I straight up got another cold, right? And I was like, this is some bullshit right here. Mm-hmm. Because, like, my, my cold was going away, and I felt I was no longer contagious. I wasn't. I didn't sound like you. I didn't even act like you. I was just just like Uh on the very end of it, still coughing a tiny bit, but it was very much sort of on the outskirts. And then all of a sudden I felt this straight, like the faintest sensation of a sore throat. And I was like, that's not right. Yeah. (laughs) Is this part of the healing process? Is this part of the healing process for my old cold Mm -hmm. or what's going on? But I knew deep down even though I hoped it was part of the healing process, I knew deep down it wasn't part of the healing process and that it was wrong. It was not the right thing I should have been feeling. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, I was sick. Yeah. With another thing. And well, the doctors tested me and said, oh, you can get multiple colds back to back because there's so many different viruses floating around right now that you have immunity to one, but you don't have immunity to the other ones. And guess what? I got sick a motherfucking third time, <laughs> like last week. And now I feel like I'm coming out of that. Like, I feel like it's getting gradually less and less. But it was like that second sore throat went through its whole cycle. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden last week, lo and behold, I was at the tail end of the other one. And what do you know that I just started feeling a freaking different type of sore throat. And it was a very subtle thing. And I was like, what the hell's going on? The next day it was not as subtle. Mm -hmm. It was only on the right side. And I was like, this is a different kind of sore throat than the other one that I was having. So something is up. And sure enough, it's not over. You know what I mean? It's never over for us, is it? I I mean, I feel like even people watching this show would be quite... uh, One could really... In fact, one could really trace a line here if one wanted to do some investigative research into this um, scenario that we found ourselves in. Because I will say last last episode, uh, 14 days prior to this, um, you also were sounding quite sick on that episode. And I, we're I sitting I right here, in fact. So, True, I don't know. I, I'm, not I'm not making any claims. I'm not making any claims. Oh, you You did. I'm oh. so sorry. Oh, no, no. I'm not making any claims. I'm just oh, saying dude. you were I'm sick. Kidding. You were here. I oh, was not God, sick. Totally right. I'm oh, here. So, oh, I'm just shit. something to consider. You know, something to you consider. You know what? Then I could have come over because I might be immune to whatever it is you have. Because I probably... Right, we'll just pass it back and forth. experience to... Wait, <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I think that you do get immunity to the one virus that you did already have. Um, ones. I mean, potentially, yeah. Is, and we have some. Though, co- oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm just curious. What did yours start off as? We'll move away from this subject soon. I just want to know. Oh, it was a sore throat first and foremost. Wow. Yeah. On both sides Classic. or? Well, uh, it was, you know, really just the full frontal sore throat. <laughs> <laughs> did it hurt when you swallowed? Um, it did. They- it. It did begin to hurt when I swallowed. Oh, I'm seeing that my did mic might be a little high. Did you wish that you would spit? No, I'm that. just kidding. What? I was seeing that my mic might have been peaking. Uh, let us know, by the way, if I can make some adjustments, if there's any uh, audio issues, listeners. Um, did I Did I what? Sorry, what did you say? Did you experience pain while swallowing? <laughs> um. Yes, absolutely. Like, Night right. one, yeah. night one, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. day one, it was tickle, tickle, tickly, tickle, just a little bup, bup, bup. And then that night it was tickle like, me tonsils, as they call it. Yeah, it was like a <laughs> gl, like when you're swallowing, you know, it was a little right. like, ow, you know? Yes, yeah. I hear that. Um, in fact, uh, Josh, who's now running out of this room <laughs> right now, commented, uh, I also have a right side sore throat like Laura had. He commented this. Oh, my God. This. Wow. And he I is, mean, you know, oh, sitting in this shit. very room. As, uh, Did I spread disease to your I mean, look, 
Again, I'm not making any. I'm not making any oh claims. Oh God! Here. I'm not making I'm any so claims. So sorry. Here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's all. But good. would you have really preferred that I miss your birthday party? No, of course not. Of course exactly. not. Exactly. No. So it was all worth it, right? Yeah, of course it was all worth it to get potentially oh that God. entire party sick. Though I've not heard anything. Wow. So, you know. <laughs> wow. Wow. Anywho, uh, I haven't even really introduced. Could have been the Dylan. Show. If you're there, Dylan. Dylan, you know who you are. <laughs> Could have been Dylan. I don't think he was sick at all. I mean, yeah, I, he was. I like the blind blame, though. I do like that. The blind um, blame. Yeah, the blind blame. Anyways, I haven't really said anything about the show yet, so I probably should. This is Totally Tell Me. We uh, live stream episodes uh, every two Sundays, bi-weekly, as they say. Um, we're currently live on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook, uh, but we also post these episodes as audio episodes for a podcast or all, all those podcast services, so you can always uh, listen to the show if you'd prefer starting the uh, following Wednesday after we record them live. But, of course, if you want to watch live, you should uh, tune in. We always bring in people who are in the chat. We have people in the chat right now. And, uh, and yeah, so we want you to be a part of it. Feel free to comment while we'll, um, we see them. And our intro music today, uh, <laughs> yet again, was Steak Cookies by Fox Sales Brigade. Yet again, really, it's I gotta just, send you a new track. Yeah, you really do. Uh, well, it's it's also on me. I just keep... Ask I'm, me. I'm, like, logging into this truly in a last-minute way, and I'm just, like, in in the 11th hour remembering, like, oh, shit, I should probably swap out the music, and then it's, like, time to go live, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, yet again, you heard Steak and Cookies uh, by Laura and I's band, Fox Sales Brigade, so hope you fucking like it. You're gonna keep on hearing it until you do, so. Uh, and that mm-hmm. is a threat, so. Um, yeah, also, I have a bit of a plug Unless you, were, were you going to say something? Not unless it's a butt plug. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a butt plug with, well, maybe I do, but I'm certainly not going to be showing it on camera. But I do have a bit of a plug. Um... Sorry. <laughs> Wait, can, uh, so just, okay, plug your shit and then we'll talk. <laughs> okay. Um, breaking news at this hour, uh, I have not said this anywhere, but uh, my short film, He Won't Belong, which I wrote and directed... Uh, we shot now, like, two years ago, which is kind of wild, but it, wow. uh, we finished it up, I mean, it was in post-production for a while, <clears throat> finished it up, um, and it was in some festivals last year, which has been uh, really exciting, but we are going to release it online in uh, one week's time, um, so on February 26th, uh, He Won't Belong, my short film, will be uh, premiering as a featured short of the week on uh, filmshortage.com, so... Look out for that, you know, um, mark your calendars if that's how you like to live your life. Um, otherwise, you could just wake up that morning and, you know, be following me on Instagram and I'll certainly be posting about it and reminding you and such and so forth. But um, I can't believe that was two whole years ago that you shot that video. Yes. It's amazing. I was well, kind of there for it. You definitely were there. Minute, but yeah. Yeah. No, I was there. I was the uh, official COVID spokesperson right you were the code compliance Spreading officer COVID to all who entered through the doors <laughs> no i was the compliance officer indeed yes. yeah yeah that's your official title and you're in the credits for such, <laughs> such that exact title in fact you actually did an uncredited thing uh in the movie do you remember so post i made pasta that's for right. one of the scenes yes i made a very delicious looking chanterelle of sort or was it chanterelle mm-hmm. um, yes there were mushrooms in the pasta that were important, or maybe not important, I don't know. It was originally going to be chanterelles, but we had to, um, oh no, I'm sorry, it was originally going to be porcini, but we yeah. uh, changed it to chanterelles, so you're right, you did make a chanterelle pasta. Um, I wanted, In the script, it was a porcini pasta that they eat. Right, but do we want to talk about that, because is that a... Well, uh, no, I guess it's not really. I mean, out of context, it's not a spoiler. So, okay, but there's okay. a pasta. Laura made it. <laughs> it looks quite good. It's one of the most attractive things in the film. I yeah. watched the movie just for that. But yeah. there are other good things as well. Honestly, it's beautiful. Dominic is an amazing filmmaker, by the way. People, if you don't know his work, you can see some of it via Fox Hills Brigade mm-hmm. because he directed two of our good music videos <laughs> and uh, well probably the better ones of the, uh, the ones that we have we are not ourselves and far away and long ago and uh yeah he's a visionary but i just also wanted to add that yeah. um we normally are together in person like in the same room with each other so if you're just tuning in for the first time tonight thank you and welcome but mm-hmm. this is not how it is so apologies in advance 
Right, I guess we didn't mention why we... We didn't even... We just showed up in separate boxes today. Um, but yeah, right. if you've watched our previous couple episodes, at least, we've been in person, and we will normally be in person. Um, but, you know, when required, we will uh, we will be on Zoom like we are today. I'm kind of talking to the chicken coopers who are here, who, like, they see this exact setup with me and Brent on mm -hmm. Monday nights, so it kind of, like, they're probably experiencing this, I, this sensation of, like... I'm watching the chicken coop, but Dominic is here instead mm -hmm. <laughs> in a right. way. But like, we're also going to talk movies. But this is not how it is because we're usually in the same room and we do things like sniff candles and other yeah. such substances as that. Um, so but also shout out to Gemma Leslie, who is here. Um, I'm seeing mm -hmm. for the first time and Jamie and of course, Bryce and those people who. Yeah, I just appreciate you guys being here. So welcome. Yeah. What's you know, up, Gemma? And... Up late, far away. Yeah, and thanks to Gemma yeah. too for um, for you know helping spread the word about Totally Tell Me. Much appreciated, of course. Um, yeah, so I mean, again, uh, how the show works is we review a film every episode. Uh, we're gonna get to that film in the second half of the episode. Uh, today's film is You Won't Be Alone, <laughs> which uh, is written and directed by Goran Stolbeski, um, Stolevsky, sorry, uh, and. It's a kind of horror drama, and we will be starting the review spoiler-free, so even if you haven't seen the film, you can even stick through uh, the first part of our review, because we will um, just kind of discuss our overarching feelings on the film, and then at the very end of the episode, we will uh, get into spoilers. But for the first half of the episode, we just like to kind of chit-chat, catch up, talk about really whatever we so wish, um, which is, you know, it's exactly where we're at right now, in fact. Um, <laughs> It's, in fact, it's already been happening, really. You didn't know it, um, but we've already put the needle in the arm. You know? I didn't put it in my arm. I put it somewhere else. Yeah, well, I just I guess, I guess I was just thinking, like, you know, when they when they try and, like, distract you at the doctor's office, or really, I guess it's for, more for kids, but, like, when they try and distract those kids, you know what I mean? No, oh, I need that. Yeah. No, I do that, too, as an adult. I mm -hmm. don't look. Do you look? I, do uh, do I look? I don't look. I don't look when they're yeah. when they're putting the needle in, but it's not out of the needle. It's more the blood, actually. Like mm. I don't like seeing, and I don't that find much it... of your own blood. <laughs> yeah, I, I well, it's like it's just a little trippy to see your own blood exit your body. <laughs> you know, in a situation where it's not to be alarming. Uh, I feel like instinctually we should we just have something within us that makes us alarmed when we see our blood leaving our body. Oh, speaking of blood leaving our body, well, I actually, <laughs> I went to the doctors recently and had blood drawn, um, uh -huh. and they took a bunch of it, and I didn't actually know what it was for. I just knew that, well, I was going there to get tested for what I thought was strep throat. Uh -huh. <laughs> I obviously don't draw blood for that. And then they did a, a blood test, oh yeah, to see if it was something else, and I forgot what. Mm -hmm. But they did all these other tests, too, that I had forgotten that were ordered for me, like, months ago that I never went around, got around to doing. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was, what was it? Oh, yeah, I thought I had jaundice at one point. I don't know if this is interesting, but, like, I thought that my eyes were too yellow or something like that, but they're actually not. I don't have jaundice, but I did find out something else that is not ideal that I'm going to reveal for the first time publicly right now. Oh, wow. So this is a, this is a, a health reveal. Uh, like Kinda, yeah. a, a health status reveal. Yeah, this was <laughs> just and what I the people was are not, tuning in for. Yeah, people. I mean, this is I. Yeah, not even like. Well, I did tell my brother, but he's like the only person I told. To, well, not that I'm like trying to not tell anybody, but mm -hmm. it's just kind of weird. And I, well, this is a safe I did not space. Suspect. <laughs> it is not a safe space, but that's okay. You're a safe space, but <laughs> this is not a safe space. <laughs> Live um, streaming, perfect right. time to no, talk about. Um, Go ahead. I didn't suspect that I had symptoms of such a thing. Oh, I thought maybe I, well, Anton had accused me of becoming this way if I didn't stop my habits. But I was like, whatever about it in a way. But I'm not usually like whatever about, about most illnesses. I'm very much about being alert about sort of things and trying to be not sick and stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I found out that I am in fact pre-diabetic. Oh, wow. So there you go. Yikes. Well, and yeah, at first I and what does that scurvy. mean? No, <laughs> well, what does it mean? Anybody? Pre diabetic. Like, does that mean that I don't even, your it means levels that I are don't... getting to a certain degree that you need to start being concerned? I need to be concerned a little bit. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm, not, I'm not diabetic, but I, I'm at the very bottom of the threshold of being 
pre-diabetic, meaning I'm like just past the line between not being pre-diabetic and being mm -hmm. pre-diabetic. So what do but you do? But it basically you means I need to stop drinking like an, uh, sugar coffee drinks like what I'm drinking right now, <laughs> though it's my only sugar thing that I'm having all day. I mean, I've been really trying to, you know, trying to, uh, what do they call it? What's the word I'm looking for? Come um, back. Cool, cool it. I'm oh, trying to cool, cool it. it. <laughs> Yes. Oh, right. The but, medical um, term, cool it. Forgot. The medical term is to cool it. Cool it. And, I, and that's what I'm trying to do. Is that what your doctor said? He was like, you're pre-diabetic, so you got to cool it. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. My doctor didn't say anything because I didn't talk to them yet, but I saw the results, and that's what it says. And they were like, you can see all these resources. And then I watched a resource that they linked to, and it was just like this video on Kaiser Permanente's website that was like, you can have fun while being pre-diabetic. By eating only healthy vegetables. <laughs> and I was like, that is not fun. But, well, I mean, I'll try it. It's just sugar level, right? That you would have to watch. No, I, know. I have to, like, watch it. But I also need to start exercising because I never did that at all. Mm, like, uh -huh. I think that at my age, they expect you to exercise. Like, every time I go to the doctor, they ask me, how many times a week do you exercise? And I'm always like, zero. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like you're gonna want to up that a little bit, and I'm uh -huh. like, but it's I hate it, and and they're yeah. like, yeah, but you're gonna want to try to start. So I decided to just start doing it this week because now I know that I'm pre-diabetic and that's not a good look. But I do believe that I can reverse that, but it's just I have to be, I have to cool it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool it down. So well, yeah, I don't know. I think that, but if I got diabetes, that would not be good. That would be not good. Uh, I think yeah. you can like lose limbs and things. <laughs> um, it can be serious, yeah, can be. But I really don't know exactly what diabetes means totally, other than like you're not supposed to have much sugar or something like well, that. But there I don't know. Multiple level. There's not multiple levels. There's but type there's one. Types, yeah. Um, yeah. There's like type one diabetes <clears throat> and there's type two. And but like, one is really bad. But right. I don't remember well, which is one. It? One is no, like two is no, no. I just mean like one of them. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if it's one. Oh, one. But oh. one of them is really bad. And then one of them mm -hmm. is like a, is far more manageable and, and not like I a huge think, deal. I think that type one is like maybe something that you're born with, maybe. Mm -hmm. But maybe type two is the type that you get from eating a lot of sugar, like I do. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, you but do like your sweets, Laura. This is a big I change do. for you. Yeah, it's not my favorite thing. <laughs> but I think that once I get back down below the threshold, which I'm confident that I will be able to do because I'm right at the first number of being in the in the pre-diabetic range mm -hmm. see it's like a number range like it goes between like 5.2 something to 10 or whatever mm -hmm. i'm at 5.2 something the first number so i i assume if i just like do some due diligence for the next couple weeks or months or something i'll get back below and then i can go back to candy and things uh-huh uh people people by the way were trying to guess and they and they guessed um di <laughs> diarrhea uh scurvy gout uh, none, of it, none of it was oh, correct. Sorry, Jamie. I should have looked at the comments. I should have looked at the um, guess. And yeah, they're, they're saying exercise is, is good. Exercise is like, seems like everyone's agreeing. So yeah, so just do Jamie that. Jamie said that it is serious. So being pre diabetic is serious. Wow. Well, yeah. It's funny because I do feel that it's kind of serious, but I also feel that it's not that serious. Well, you've got just things that know. you can do to, to, you know. Right. I know that you have to exercise. So I did that. I went to the gym. Oh. <laughs> Like four times so a what week. Do you, and, damn. Yeah. It's from just, zero to four is pretty. I yeah. mean, I would say that's cool in it. You cooled it, I but know, you were I'm also cool. like kind of heating it up a little bit. <laughs> well, yeah. And I also like ran two miles each time I went, which is a heck of a lot for me because I hate doing that. Yeah. You're heating it up. Yeah. But I think I ran two. I mean, shoot. I think I did the treadmill thing right, but I went on the treadmill and I did that. Mm -hmm. I got back on it because there was a time when I went there and I was doing it and. You know what really helps is watching episodes of Girls at the same time. <laughs> I'm revisiting. Are you rewatching Girls too? I'm rewatching Girls. Are you really? Well, me oh and my Josh God. are. Where are you with it? Uh, on the last season, actually. So I'm towards the end. Oh of my wow! Rewatch. Um, really? Wait, when did you start relapsing? <laughs> well, it was mainly because uh, Josh, my boyfriend, has not seen, um, had not oh. seen Girls prior to oh us rewatching or me rewatching it with him. Uh, I think we might have started. It, it's been like, I mean, we're watching it kind of slowly. I think it's probably been like four months or so that we've been like slowly rewatching things. Maybe even longer, like four to six months we've been rewatching it. 
We're just uh-huh. kind of like taking it bit by bit, but we're getting oh, to the end. Months. Does Josh uh, like it? He likes it probably. I oh, yeah, yeah. Imagine. No, yeah, he's it's really a, into it. It's a pretty fun show. It's great. Like, I Man, think it, it's... it's remembered in, like, various lights. I mm-hmm. think when it was airing, people were really hard on it because, like, they just wanted... I, I feel like Lena Dunham got dealt a bad hand in the media. And, like, some of it, I think, was, like, somewhat earned because she was saying wild shit. But also, I think most of it was just, like, people saying... Or people taking the wild things, like, they're, you know this like press release or something it's like well she's just like speaking she's just speaking like a normal person and you know i just feel like you can't hold people to like she's not crafting uh what she's saying in in uh interview form she's crafting what she's saying in the show and i think the show is like very well written and it's a lot it's it becomes much more clear when you actually watch the show what she's getting at and i think people just kind of saw her more as like a media figure to hmm. kind of poke and prod at, you know? Well, I know that she got some flack for some of the things that she put in the show, but I also think that she was highly revered for being so sort of cutting edge on at the time of the show and, like, kind of, you know, exposing things on the show that hadn't really before that been so sort of posed publicly. You know what I mean? Like, she... I feel like at the time, the way I saw that show when it first came out was that there was no other show like it before that. That was, you know, that was sort of geared towards my demographic at the time, which was, you know, like mm-hmm. post-college age kids and what it's like to live your life after college. You know what I mean? I think in it's a bit kind of, of a Sex urban... in the City, but not... Nah, it's so different, though. Sex in the City just feels so much older. You know what I mean? Like, in a way. Yeah, and but... Not... I... Like, girls living in, in the big city. Like, I, I feel like people make that comparison. I'm not into Sex in the City, but, like, I can see the comparison. But Girls is obviously doing its own thing, you know? I guess Girls was kind of like the, in, it was like the indie rock version of, but not. It's like, I didn't even see it as Sex in the City, to be honest, at all. Because I just felt like it was such a different t- style, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And And just the... The dialogue was so different, and the issues I feel like that people were encountering were pretty different. You know what I mean? And well, the way they were dealing with issues was very different. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like the way that they were dealing with the issues they were encountering were ways in which, you know, as a twenty-something or as a post-college person myself, it became from it was familiar to me. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Even though it was like obviously exaggerated in a lot of ways, but I just thought I just think that man, the, I'm rewatching the first season, and there are some freaking funny ass moments in that show. Season one in particular oh is God. so good. Um, yeah. The part yeah. when the dad like <laughs> falls out of the shower is so funny. Oh, yeah. I don't know if people here watch that show, but oh, my God. Yeah. I think it has a little bit of a lull in, like, season four, I want to say. There's six mm-hmm. seasons. I think season four was kind of like a low, and then season five, it's like, <clears throat> it's a little better, but still not, like, great. And then now season six, where we're at, it's like, pretty good again. like i think the i think the final season kind of brought back a bit more of the vibes that were like in the earlier seasons um, right like it seemed like maybe she got this all the success and then maybe the writing suffered a little bit in the middle of i mean they're really pumping because... this out you know like think about it like i i, I would yeah. assume that she probably wrote that first season over many years and then like you know had a, maybe an outline for like what she might do for season two and three but like I'm sure four and five were just totally just <laughs> like you, I, like a writer's room has to kind of come in at that point and like she kind of mm-hmm. writes less in the because I'm always looking at like who wrote the re- episodes who directed the episodes she yeah. almost always writes and directs writes or directs an episode uh, or or she she almost always writes or directs all episodes of the first season and then two she's like right she I think she wrote like half of them mm-hmm. and then like as the seasons go on she. And just understandably so, because it's like, you know, a, becomes a machine <laughs> that they're releasing these seasons one every uh, year, you know, mm-hmm, that she just mm-hmm. kind of writes less and less of them. Uh, yeah, well, that makes <clears throat> sense. But yeah. anyway, that was a anyway. time, wasn't it? That was such a different time in a way, you know, kind of. I mean, it's just things are different now, aren't they? Yeah. It's weird how that show has suddenly become like a figment of the past, really. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we reviewed we reviewed the finale on Totally Tell Me. Remember that? Oh, did we? Oh my god! We reviewed the series finale. 
Wow, uh, so that's cool. That's how long this show's been going on, too. Oh my god. <laughs> well, what's up with you? Enough with yeah, girls yeah. talk. How are you doing? What do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> uh, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I really just got back um, mere hours ago from um, Harbin Hot Springs. Do you know Harbin Hot Springs? Oh. Wait, no. Wait, is that up north, like kind of near Ukiah? Um, is it near Ukiah? It's or, it's like, like two it's hours north. Yeah. Oh, and it's kind of in the woods and stuff. Yeah, very much in the woods. Yeah. Heard about it. Heard Wanna about go. it. Should go. Well. What do they do? Did they like massage your balls? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they do have massages there. I'm joking. There. Sorry, sorry, Dominic's mom. If you're tuned in, <laughs> <laughs> no, don't uh, don't censor have yourself. To throw in these things. Oh come okay. on. <laughs> <It's>, All right. <laughs> the audience is not here, Laura. Um, anyways, uh, people. They do have massages, but we didn't get massages. We just went to oh. the, uh, it was Josh and I, we both went. Um, Josh took me for my birthday. It was a birthday present. Oh, lucky. Delayed birthday present. Um, mm-hmm. So we went for just one night. We stayed in the small town that's nearby and then uh, did like the, a 24-hour pass. So we were there from, you know, midday yesterday to early this morning. But yeah, it was great. Um, it's like... Oh, it sounds so good. Very... Uh, you know, salt water esque tantric. Do you float? Oh, chakra, tantra. You know, uh, how aligning. do they do tantra? Where they like, I want you to breathe into your solar plexus and then just feel it in your reproductive region and let it all come out down there. I guess what I mean is like the vibe I was getting from the people around me was very like, you know. Oh my God! Like, are there gurus present? Penis dome. Um, are there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wasn't it. Uh, like, okay. I always kind of feel like when you go to these hot springs, um, there is a, a larger contingent of gay men than otherwise really? would be uh, present in modern, in just everyday no. society. Oh, that's um, interesting. You know, like the gays, they find these these springs, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I feel like most of the people I talk to who have been to the springs, as yeah. they call them, are like, you know, like middle-aged women who just want to go to the spa. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying like, not the majority of people were gay, but what I'm saying is there were there's always more gay people at the spa than, you know, just any given Sunday walking through the streets of, of wherever. You know what I mean? Like Interesting. Uh, okay. But I didn't really know what to expect, but there wasn't really like that many. Uh, it was not It was not particularly gay. It was like mostly this kind of, you know. Um, sort of a. People, types yeah. of people that may be named Balawesha or like wearing sort of paisley parachute pants type of looking people. Absolutely. Yeah. And like, I, I like think a I... Terry cloth robe of sorts. Yeah. Like my meal that I got was a, um, you know, like a quinoa... Um, oh, sort of a bowl. Uh, black bean bowl with the, the oh, okay. avocado. And, we, and you got... Sort um, of a I am grateful bowl An I am sorts. grateful bowl, yeah. It was sort of... I'm forgetting the name. The, all the names were good. I should have taken a picture of the menu. But the oh menu had God. some good names. Um, <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, people people are just like... They're doing their, like, stretches, you know? They're like... Mm-hmm. And they're, like, centering themselves, you know? Uh, makes sense. In one of the very hot tubs... Um, there was this woman and she was kind of doing a bit of a breathing. It was sort of like a, ah, <laughs> you know, like a sort of, <laughs> oh my like, God. as I was leaving, I heard her beginning to do her breathing exercises, which is sort of like a guttural, like from the central so- chakra, like a, ah, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> This was in the very hot tub. The very hot tub, yeah. The, what the about hottest the, like, of the hot. The like mega hot tub. Was there like a oh pretty hot tub? Was there like there yeah, was, there like, was yeah. There was like <laughs> nice like basically hot tub, pretty hot tub, very hot tub. Did they label them. As well, such? they don't label them as such, but there is a little like map <laughs> that you get, and then the map tells you what's what. But also, your body tells you what's what when you enter them. Uh, but Wait, so and that woman's moning also tells you what's what. Yeah, when you exactly. Yeah, yeah. You kind of you know, know when you hear. Ah, you're <laughs> in the very hot tub. I guess she had to release. You know, she had to release. <laughs> <laughs> I can only assume. Do you feel yourself having to release when you were in the v, v hot tub? It, you know, the V hot tub really does like bring out um, 
I don't know, some essential oils or something from your body. <laughs> you know, you're just like, Why? Did it smell like patchouli and butt crack in there or something? Um, no offense, no offense. Too, too hard no to... No offense to that lady. Yeah, no. Too hard to say, like, what it smelled like. Um, because oh, so really, it didn't, like, have a stench. No, I mean, it's, like, outdoors. Actually, that was, like, a pretty amazing part of it was uh, it was raining. And it was actually pretty amazing oh, to be cool. in, like, uh, they have this one pretty large tub. Um, it's called the meditation pool. And, uh, and so we went in the meditation pool. It was, it was mostly raining almost the entire time we were there, but there was one time where we were in the meditation pool and it was, it like became like torrential. It was like Mm -hmm. crazy rain. And like everyone started just kind of like looking around each other and like smiling. It was just like this, this moment that everyone was like sharing. That was actually pretty amazing. Like how many people were sharing this moment, would you say? Um, how many people shared this moment with me? I would say 20-ish, 20-ish people were in that meditation pool. So wow. if you're, if you're oh. watching or listening, um, Was anyone you know. moaning at the time? No one was, was moaning at the time. Was everybody just like in silence? Yeah, because that was a silent pool, Laura. Um, was si- oh, really? Yeah, it, that's, it that's the... It said silent? No, it's the si- silence, please, pool, yeah. Mm. People, so, people meditate in that one. No, and, I've been to something like this, though. Really? In Wyoming, there's uh-huh. a... We went to Hot Springs last summer... On a road trip with Anton's family, we went to this hot springs that was outside, and it was raining while we were... They had all these different pools outside, and mm-hmm. and it was raining while we were in those pools. So I have had the experience, though I have not been into one specifically entitled meditation pool uh-huh. or V-hot pool <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> or really necessarily heard people moaning in such a way. But mm-hmm. that's not to say that I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that sounds amazing. There was one guy yeah. in the sauna who was... Um, sort of doing a stretch that, um, well, I guess I could only describe as, uh, the stretch also could have doubled as a sex position and he was, um, you know, fully showing hole, I would say. I was going to (laughs) say. Fully showing hole. Fully showing hole, yeah. Wait a minute. I forgot to ask you. Was everybody basically naked this whole time? Because yeah, I'm imagining yeah. at the meditation pool, just like penises flapping around and people are like, let's enjoy this moment together. This sort of double <laughs> rainbow moment. No, it's, but it's absolutely. There are. <laughs> <laughs> it's very much naked. Yeah. Naked. It's full nudity. So was the woman who was like, <sighs> like, <laughs> what was. She was naked. Yeah, yeah was she of course. standing? I, well, yeah, no, of course, yes. But like, was she, like, were you able to gaze upon the naked body of her of this woman during the moan, or was it submerged in water to the point where you could? Well, submerged in water. I mean, also, oh, you know, okay. I'm mostly. Or did she like come out of the water? Um, no, no, she was like in the hot water. You know, um, I'm just not... imagine like she's in the hot water. You don't see anything, and then when she has to breathe, she comes out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining a very sort of robust kind of. Right. No, no, no. no. It was okay. So she was in the water, like fully submerged and, you know, uh, like shoulders in the water. And I was also in there. It was very hot. And I could only, I could only be in that really hot pool for probably like five minutes at most. And then I had to get out because it was like that hot. So I was like on my way out and I'm like passing her. And then she just goes, (laughs) <laughs> and I don't think it was directed at me or really anyone but the gods, you know? <laughs> what if it was directed at you? That would be fucking obscene. Like, that was, like, her way of being, like, get out of my way. Or it was her, like, maybe it was, like, her way of saying, bless you or something like that. Like, oh, you're she wanted blessed. to spread joy. I am grateful. I yeah, am grateful. I am grateful. <laughs> <laughs> I like being around people like that. Like, I'm, I'm not going to wa- participate, but, like, I enjoy I enjoy people doing their breathing exercises around Why me. Would, what would you do if, if you were participating? <laughs> like, what would participating entail? Like, you responding back with, uh, <laughs> like, she's... Yeah, well, I think we have deep eye contact. Like, <laughs> and then you respond by going, uh, <laughs> And I think it's deep eye contact, like, directly... <laughs> Facing one another. <laughs> like, we're inches apart, inches apart. Like, the entire front of her, like, private parts are just, like, scorched red. 
I also wonder what the butt cheeks are looking like at this point. Probably right. like slapstick red. Right. Well, maybe this all was to hide a big old fart that she was having. You know? <laughs> oh my god! Right. You said that this the heat makes you sort of tell all or yeah, whatever. Yeah. You said. I what mean, was the word you said? Sort of just break wind. What, was the word? <laughs> what did what you did, say? What did I say? I don't know. Um, you said it makes you just sort of release. Yeah. Sort. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So Re- you, oh, yeah, did you hear some farts? Did um, you, oh, oils, right? So I didn't hear any mean, farts. Like, but I, I will say, though, if you were farting in those pools, like, who's to know? <laughs> Why? Were there, like, bubbles at the same time? As we, well, I as guess, we yeah. we established with the jacuzzi. <laughs> We know why the jacuzzi bubble was invented. <laughs> yeah, there's no like jacuzzi bubbles in these. These are like quite quiet. Though Still. actually, in the in the very hot oh. one, there was like a little waterfall going, so that could hide a fart actually quite the well. The splash would the splash yeah. was enough to hide a fart. No, right. oh, you mean who's to know because it smells like sulfur the whole time? Um, actually, no. There's no sulfur smell at all, which is actually quite odd. I didn't even consider oh, that. That is just odd. Now. Because I've been to other ones where it is quite sulfury, but this one, this is... not even a faint wisp of a sulfur. That's suspicious indeed, don't you think? How I guess come to think of it, in retrospect, I am now a little suspicious. It's true. It's That's true. feeling a little wrong to me. Huh. Um, I would dig deeper with that one. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Just saying. All right. I wonder what that woman's doing now. I wonder if she she's has a nightly ritual where she's just sort of <sighs> doing that sort of thing. <laughs> I mean, you can also stay on site, so maybe she's still there as we speak. Maybe she's back up in the meditation pool. Um, you know, it's funny that that sound is not totally removed from something that I sometimes do to make Ethan laugh. Mm. You know what I do to make Ethan laugh? This made me laugh when I was a kid. I don't know if it'll make you laugh, but just this face with this sound. <sighs> <laughs> Like flaring one's nostrils and doing that, Ethan just cracks up. The first time I saw that face and heard that sound, I was just dying of laughter mm. as a child. Now I understand as an adult it might not seem very sort of you know upper echelon. Yeah, but... prim and proper. <sighs> I say hi. My name is Brenda. <laughs> he just thinks that is so funny. <laughs> Look, anyway. you're a comedian. I'm not a comedian. No, you're a comedian. Uh, no, no. Anywho, um, but yeah, it was it was good. It was a, it was a fun time. Um, you know, we uh, we just did our. That's thing. That's amazing. You know? So you just got back from that today. Yeah, this morning. Yeah. And so you didn't get massages. You went in a bunch of different pools. Mm-hmm. Did you? Lots of different pools. Did they have showers? Did you do showers? Yeah, they have. Yeah, you shower before you get in. <laughs> and are the do the are the showers a, a sort of massage in themselves? Um, well, the pressure was nice, if that's what you're asking. Uh, Is it outside? (laughs) The, yeah, the showers are just outside. You shower, like, basically, you know, a stone's throw away from, from the pool that you're about to get into. Okay. Does it, is that cold and uncomfortable to do before you get in the pool? I will say it was very cold. Like, I don't like that. Usually I'll do a cold plunge more often than I did (laughs) this time. I love a cold plunge. I love going from the oh, hot to I the cold. Oh, I hate a cold plunge. No, I hate that. Well, see, like, you hate it in concept, but then you do it, and you're like, oh, my God, this feels amazing. Like, it really does. <laughs> it really does just, like, uh, activate sort you, Sort of you know? invigorate the yeah. senses. So I do love doing a cold plunge, but I actually did it less often than I normally would, because any time you left a pool, it was a, it was a cold plunge just being out in, in the wilderness, you know? I mean, like, the rain was freezing, and then, like, it was also just cold out. So Mm -hmm. those two things, just like running from pool to pool, was a cold plunge. (laughs) Right. That was my experience in Wyoming as well at the um, outdoor hot springs. Yeah. Well, anyways, happy birthday, little birthday boy. It's really just been a birthday month at this point. I mean, Jesus, my birthday was 11 days ago at this point. It's like... (sighs) Man, I guess I got to take you out too. Uh, No, you don't. (laughs) What are you talking about? You came to my birthday party. That's more than enough. I know, but, you know, tradition. Um, Anywho, uh... Oh, yeah, I was just curious, like, yeah, have you been, like, watching anything outside of, before we get to the film, or if there's anything else going on with you, we can get to that, too. I had pretty much told all. Oh, well, I mean, uh-huh. I did go to Joshua Tree last week, which was fun. I did not go to a spa, but that was a brief and sort of interrupted trip because we did our last show. Oh, yeah, that's some news, I guess. Oh, yeah. That's <clears> something to tell. Whatever. It's not much to say about it. We did our last, well, not our last show. Fox Hills Brigade played its last show for probably a long time with bass player joe lewis who just moved to um 
New Orleans. Nashville. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Nashville. <laughs> Nashville, Tennessee. Um, that. So, you know, he's an old-time bass player from the very early days. Yeah. Um, but that's not to say that there won't be more Fox Hills Brigade shows on the horizon. Um, oh, yeah, I'll make this announcement now. I am playing a solo show in Alameda on March 2nd um, at the Fireside Lounge, nice. um, which is going to be a benefit for Gaza. And uh, all the proceeds are going to be going, I believe, to Mecca, which is an alliance for um, like children in Gaza who are suffering, mm -hmm. unfortunately and needlessly, at the hands of this yeah. very unfortunate situation. So all the proceeds will go to that. And um, yeah, you guys should check that out if you're free. All right. What else are we talking about here? Um, actually, I was curious. Have you watched uh, True Detective? Have you been watching the new season of True Detective? I haven't asked you about no, that. No, I'm not that into that show. Okay. No offense. Just wondering, just wondering. <laughs> or I, I watched one season of it, didn't I? I don't know. Oh, no, did you? <laughs> yeah. Every well, season's like a new story. Um, but yeah, season four no. is like airing. The, the final episode comes out tonight, so I've not seen the final episode, but I've seen everything leading up to it. Would I recommend it? No, mm -hmm. not really. Okay. Well, or at least this watched... particular season has been a mixed bag. And mm -hmm. theoretically, it could all come together in this final episode, but I am leaning towards doubting that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> However, I will wait and see what happens tonight, and maybe I'll report back uh, next time if um, it's, you know, if it really surprised me in the end. But uh, Well, you know what show was pretty good, actually, that we did watch the entire season of was, uh, I mean, it was entertaining enough, was uh, um, Fargo. The new season of Fargo. Oh, the new season. Okay. Um, I haven't seen any of them, but I did start season oh. one a long time ago, oh. and then I just got distracted. But um, I actually yeah. really liked it. I should get back to it. Yeah, I know. That's a fun watch. You got, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I think you'll enjoy the seasons. Um, but yeah, the newest one just happened, and you know, it was pretty, pretty good. I mean, What's your I favorite of them? Or do you have a favorite? Oh, you just like them all? The one with. Kirsten Dunst and uh, the guy from Breaking Bad who plays like the Nazi, you know, <laughs> Jesse Plemons, the young guy. Yes, yes. Who's also in, you know, Killing of a Sacred Flower. I mean, <laughs> as they called it, um, <laughs> Killing of a Sacred Flower. <laughs> Is that a combo of uh, Killing of a Sacred yes. Deer and Killers <laughs> of the Flower Moon? You got it. Wow. Um, but you know, yeah, he's. I forget what, I, I, you know. These days, I can I watch things and I enjoy them, and then I just forget about them to a, to a degree. All right. Not all of them, but like, and I hate to say it, with this movie, which I enjoyed in various ways. You know, I had opinions about this movie that we're gonna talk about. Mm -hmm. I've watched it a week ago, so I'm just gonna give that disclaimer. I've kind of forgotten some of it, but I did do a little bit of reviewing before the show. But there are things that are just not fully fresh in my memory. That's totally fine. That's just what happens when you watch stuff a lot, you know. Yeah. So oh. Uh, Wait, I did tell you that I finished the, uh, what's it called, The Curse, though. Oh, we talked about this. Did we not? Um, yeah, oh, yeah. We, I think we talked oh, about yeah. it last episode. Or we, oh, okay. If we didn't, though, I think we both oh, loved God. that show. <laughs> well, I really, really liked the last episode. And I know I did enjoy the show. I, you know, it was good. Yeah, I liked mm -hmm. it. Yeah. All right. Soylent so. Heston said season one is aces. Is that to oh, say okay. that it's very good, Soylent? Mm -hmm. Um. I, I, saying. I, what does aces mean? Yeah, what is aces? <laughs> well, he said aces in quotes, and then that throws. Like, is me a that the bit. name of the season, or, yeah. or is, are you just saying like it's awesome? Aces wild. Type yeah, like thing. like damn, it's yeah, full full like, aces or something. Like she's the ace, or he's the ace. Right. Like, is this like a, a new term that people are using? You know, is this a term that we are unaware right. of? Yes, like, I feel like I learn I learn a lot of these from my brother, and I've yet to hear my brother say aces. So, what are some terms your brother says that you don't know about? Um, the latest thing that he says a lot is if something is bad, he goes, oh, dude, that's ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's not new. That's old school. Well, they're always that's old, it. but then they bring them back. No, they're not. No, there are some new phrases that I was just, I've heard of, but I can't remember them, but they are not of my time. They're like completely brand new. But maybe you don't know them because you're not. <laughs> well, yeah. Either. Well, yeah, I think things come back and things can <laughs> be new, but... Wait, so when's at what's ass for like like just calling so like oh that's straight ass. Oh that's right. ass. Right. Well, okay, it's sort of a variation on uh the term, but yeah, I know I feel that I've heard that before. Okay. I mean, yeah. Well, I've heard like that sucked ass. 
Well, no, see, but that's different. That I know. I know it's different. I know it's different. That's but there's I a, just feel a distinct difference because he's saying that it is ass, not that well, it I like is. That. I enjoy that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel that that is a little bit of a new sort of way to use an old phrase, but a word. <laughs> right. But um, or uh, not new. I mean, it's not quite. You know, part of my 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 historical upbringing to use it in such a way, but yeah. By hey. the way, we did finally get our answer from Soylent Heston. Uh, he said, <laughs> "Aces was Billy Bob Thornton's catchphrase in season one." Uh, so okay. I, I guess it was not. It's not like the new hip phrase, but you know what? It could be. <clears throat> I, no. Why not say oh. aces as like, oh, that's because. I think aces implies bit, number one, you know, like the best. It's the best. It does, but it just feels uncool for some reason. I don't know. I just don't feel that it's quite on the cutting edge well, of, you know what I mean? Like sort do, of hip talk. But don't all things feel uncool until someone makes them cool and then it becomes cool? No, no. There are certain things that simply will not and are not going to be cool. Like they were not cool and they still are not cool, even though people are trying to make them cool. Uh -huh. Like what? Like what do you think? I'm right sorry, now. but parachute pants. And I am guilty as charged <laughs> of having worn them in the 90s. I wore Jinkos. I talked about this on the Chicken Goop the other week. Uh -huh. And they are totally back, but yet they are not cool. They, people are going to look back on this generation or this decade, this era right now that we are in of fashion is going to be looked back on with a lot of distaste and a lot of just disgust <laughs> by its own people. So and you're talking about those big, it. those massive jeans. Just those big, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't look good. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, but just realize that people, it doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. What just if I just it. showed up and started wearing those? Like, what would you, would you have to like take me aside or something? I might. Yeah, I might have. Okay. Well, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's funny. It's, it's almost like, I felt so embarrassed to admit that I wore Jenkos <laughs> like in high school when um, I was in my twenties. I was so embarrassed to even admit that. Like my brother would bring it up sometimes, and I'd be like, "Please do not talk about that." <laughs> But now I can at least because they're kind of like back now. I don't feel as embarrassed, but I do fully, fully, uh, you know, I fully admit that it's not a good look. I fully, what's the word I'm looking for? I fully embrace, You're, not embrace, but I fully am that. I fully admit that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Soylent And as those. Bryce says, no disrespect to Slipknot. <laughs> right, Slipknot. Right. There is a name that will never, and has never. And no offense, been cool. Right, right. Right? Slipknot oh, is not a good name. How about corn? Corn's not a good corn name. Corn with a K, yeah. Yes, um, corn with a K. No, 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 no. Is that a good no. name? I mean, better no. than Slipknot. Better than Slipknot. Is it, okay, you know what else is not going to be cool? Papa Roach. Papa Roach is, ho is horrendous, yeah. <laughs> it's horrendous. <laughs> Papa, Papa Roach is, it only conjures, I mean, it just, it's just nasty. It like... It's it gives you a, a bit of, like, a back of throat sort of, like, bleh, you know? It's sort of got that back of throat tickle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like the beginning of a sickness <laughs> when I hear Papa Roach, you know? Right. No. Oh, you know what else I don't feel will ever be cool is um, dumpster funk, spelled with a PH. <laughs> <laughs> that will never be cool. Who's and trying to make the that name cool? Of the band. Oh, the band dumpster funk. Okay, okay. I did not. I was not aware of dumpster funk's game. D u m p s t a p h u n k. Yes. Dumpster. Not cool. Not cool at all. And also, don't feel that the name. Uh, to be quite frank, I do not feel that the name Limp Biscuit is or ever was cool. At yeah, horrible. Cool. I think right. there was like this whole thing of just like uncool in the, stuff happening. Yeah, and like what what was that? Mid the early 2000s, yeah. No, 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 it was like the early 2000s, late 90s almost. Like it was what they, what I was, I was listening to a podcast the other day um, that was talking about that time and they referred to it as, um, as, oh God, wait, what was the culture they called it? It was like, it was like basically raunch culture. Yes, raunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was, right. I think the word raunch is also not a good sounding word, but it does describe something, I suppose. Right. Like if you were going to call your band like, Ronch crotch or something like that. That would not be cool and never would be cool. <laughs> Ronch crunch. Right, right. That would be good. It's horrible. So, I hate it. You know it. what I mean? Like I they say that the band makes the name, but it doesn't always work that way. <laughs> yeah, I think like also all their lyrics were very trying to be edgy by being um, kind of, I mean, it was raunchy. Like their lyrics were raunchy. 
Weren't they? Like Limp Biscuit, wasn't he? Oh, he's and like, like, talking like about... what's his name? Kid Rock. Ugh. Oh, God. That was his time. But I will say not not a horrible name, though. Not Kid a horrible Rock. name, yeah. Kid Rock's not the worst name of the bunch, but I it's just not think that like he... conjuring up thought and memory. <laughs> well, yeah, because you remember what he looks like no, and you're he like, He made that horrible. band bad. Yeah. yeah, he made the name. He made the name bad. Like bad. his yeah. image upon, like when you hear the word Kid Rock, an image comes to you and it is Kid Rock standing before you in your mind's eye. And that itself is horrendous. You know, It like has a diuretic hair. effect. I'm, mm. I'm seeing long hair. I'm seeing huge belt buckle. Like, he always just had... Mm. To me, I'm just seeing this huge bu- belt buckle, and I'm just thinking, like, you got to just walk away. you got to walk away. Mm-hmm. I agree. Walk away from the act. Yeah. Um, no, that was like the... I think that that was, and no offense to anybody, <laughs> the worst time in music of all time. <laughs> the early 2000s. Um, to yeah, like the late be. 90s, the late 90s, early 2000s, the worst time, the all time low of music. It was like the Britney Spears era. No offense to people who <laughs> like that era, but it was like the Christina Aguilera and Kid Rock and Limp Bizkit and Corn era of music. It was just like the music was at an all time low, but then it came out of it in a cool way, like in the early like 2010s or like late oh, yeah. 2000 aughts or whatever, like 05 to you know 16 17 no i mean i think I 07 know. to 09 was like the turning point to when it started to get cool again and i think well, like indie rock started to take back over no but like the shins were getting i feel like i remember the shins were kind of on their way up like around 2003 mm-hmm. you know it was like around 2003 that was when music started to get cool and it was like bell and sebastian and um like spoon and I don't know. There were just a lot of bands that were kind of on the forefront that were just, you know, reclaiming. Oh, and like in terms of mainstream, I mean, there was like, I don't know, I guess there was like the Killers and the Strokes and that, those kind of bands. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, that was cool. Gemma said Papa Ranch. I like that. Papa Ranch. Yeah, that's <laughs> yuck. But I, I, yeah, exactly. That, that, right, that could right. be a combination of words that doesn't work. Anywho. Um, I think we Not might. Right. I think we might need to transition to our uh, second half of our episode, our review. Um, yeah. So we are going to talk about the film uh, "You Won't Be Alone," which, by the way, always trips me up a little bit because my own film, which I talked about at the beginning of this episode, is called "He Won't Belong." So, like that won't be, you know, the you won't be alone. He won't belong. I'm just saying there right. was. It, it's hard for me to not say he won't belong when I say you right. won't be alone. But you won't be alone. <laughs> Again, uh, written and directed by uh, Goran Stolevsky. Um, and he, mm-hmm. this is his uh, directorial debut, though he has since also directed another film, um, which I actually had already seen before this, um, right. titled Of an Age, which uh, I really liked. Um, oh. And he has a new film coming out, in fact, quite soon called housekeeping for beginners um all three of these films he wrote and directed so um and i haven't seen Housekeep- housekeeping for beginners but i believe it comes out in like a couple months so you know he's he's uh he's really pumping these out actually because you won't be alone the film we're going to talk about um premiered in sundance in uh sundance uh, 2022 so he's just like a movie a year right now which is kind of wild <laughs> But oh, this came out in... Tw- oh, yeah, I guess it did. It did. It, it premiered in, in Sundance at, in 2022, which would have been in January 2022. It then got U.S. distribution, and it, it uh, uh, started showing in theaters uh, mid-2022. But, of course... And this uh, did well on the tomato meter. <laughs> on the tomato <laughs> I would, meter. I'm, surprisingly. Well... Usually, I don't agree with the tomato meter, to be honest. Oh, don't get me started you? on the tomato meter. <laughs> I have a, okay, I'll make this quick. I have a quick rant about Rotten Tomatoes, which is, it's extremely deceptive. Um, Mm -hmm. I feel like people don't understand what that number actually means. If, uh, how Rotten Tomatoes works is if a film gets um, over 70% on whatever the scale that that review uses, so if it's like out of five stars, if they get 3.5 stars or above, um, or, you know, if it's out of 10, they get a 7.5 all of that counts as, or I'm sorry, actually 60 and above, 60% and above. So that would be three stars and above. Uh, or, you know, if, if a film got a 65 out of 100 on that reviewer's scale, all of this would count as a fresh review. Doesn't matter if it's, um, they thought it was an amazing film, 100% like so good, 
or they thought it was like a 60, essentially like a kind of a fine film. Like that's all considered um, a fresh review. And then Rotten Tomatoes, that percentage that you're seeing is the num- the percentage of fresh reviews that there are. So it means that say something gets mm. 100% of Rotten Tomatoes, that theoretically could mean that 100% of reviewers said that this film was a 60, a 6 out of 10. <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So it doesn't mean that it's like a perfect, like it got perfect right. reviews across the board. It means that critics unanimous, unanimously agree that it's not horrible <laughs> is what right. that means. Right. Got it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, it's just something to consider. And I also think like there's other sites that you could use to better get a grasp on uh, what people are thinking about a film. Like Letterbox, which I love so much. Um, hmm. But yeah, anyways, it, so it did, it did, I think it did well critically regardless, but that's not really like, because I, I think it got like a 90 something or whatever. That doesn't mean that, um, you know, its average review is like an A plus or something. Anywho, um, so this film, You Won't Belong, it's a horror, dark fantasy, um, set in, uh, Macedonia? Macedonia. Um, which I didn't, I don't really know much about. Do you know much about Macedonia? Well, it's, I don't believe it's called that anymore. Well, right, Uh, it's like, I guess it, I was kind of reading a little bit about it, and I guess it's a, it's, okay, I'm reading about it now. Um... It's part of the Ottoman Empire for over 500 years from the late 14th century. Before its conquest. So it's like so Serbian. So like around... Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Serbia. It's it's now Serbia. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, and it follow, it uh, it follows a, um, a young girl and a witch. Um, again, we're not going to like get into spoilers or anything, so I don't want to like say too much, but I feel like it's kind of like this story of of this young woman and her relationship to this witch and i mean yeah i don't know what what, what should we say about it that doesn't really like get into things <laughs> well it's about a shape-shifting a girl who experienced there, there i don't think it's a spoiler because this is in all the you know uh-huh. whatever okay. like preview con- uh, texts and and then things like that it's about a young girl who becomes a shape-shifter and she herself becomes a witch and and her experiences as in different forms. Right, right. Um, the different forms that she takes as a shapeshifter. Yeah. But it's also kind of like, a, in, it's. I feel like it's portrayed through the lens of a kind of, you know, like folkloric, um, definitely like fo- whole folk horror style. Um, and what uh, made me gravitate towards it was just sort of the aesthetic of it reminding me a little bit of, you know, movies like The Witch or mm-hmm. even... Like a Midsommar, well, not quite Midsommar. I mean, Midsommar to a degree, but it was sort of like a bucolic setting with sort of practical looking effect type of, you know, material. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I hadn't, I didn't really see, I didn't know. I watched the trailer. I think it was because I saw it on um, Netflix or what, no, on Amazon, like the picture of it. And I have no idea why I decided to just sort of click on it and read the description because the actual like movie poster doesn't really quite look like what you would think it was going to be. Mm. But then when I read the description, I was like, wait, I'm going to check out, out this trailer. And then when I saw the trailer, I was like, I got to watch this because this is my kind of thing. I'm into folk horror and I like stuff to do with witches and fairy tales and tall tales and fables and things along the line and anything to do with like Satan and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> not to th- I'm not a Satanist. I just I like stuff that has to do with the occult. I'm just interested, find it interesting. Totally, yeah. I mean, definitely the setting and the and parts of the tone even reminded me of The Witch for sure. Um, mm. Oh, and like Wicker Man and that kind of vibe. Yeah. Oh, but uh, and also just to correct what I said about liking stuff about Satan, I don't necessarily like all movies that are to do with Satan. Like, there's a lot of movies that certainly involve like satanic elements that are not really my style, you know. Mm-hmm. So I can't say that. But stuff that is you know, sort of in a bucolic setting that is sort of folkloric and has a folk element to it. I'm very into, interested. Yeah, for interested. sure. Um, so let's just get into our overall top level thoughts on the film. Um, do you want to go first or should I? Uh, sure. Go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, I really liked this film. Um, I thought it was 
uh, I was really mm. sucked into the world immediately. Um, I just thought that like it it pulled me in from kind of like the opening sequence, which is quite uh, intense and um, really just kind of like gets straight straight into things. I knew almost nothing about this film other than just like multiple people had recommended it to me and I knew that it was like full core adjacent. Um, I mean, I think it's maybe worth noting that like, I don't think you should go into it expecting like a horror movie. It's not like, you know, it's not like a... It's not hereditary. Yeah, it, it's not like... But could fit on the same shelf. Yeah, it's certainly creepy and obviously it's dealing with like uh, witches and shape-shifting and, and, you know, it is folk horror, but it... I, like I would even say, like the witch is far scarier than this film. Like to oh, me, this yeah. was this is it's more just like a dark drama that deals with like these it's horror more meditative. Elements. Yeah, yeah. Like there's horror elements, but it feels more like a meditation almost, or it's like a little bit more sort of a. It's almost like dare I say uplifting or something like that. It's and I will say. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, yeah. It's it's very poetic. I think too. Like it's um. And it's very it, meditative, I, I would say, is another word for sure. Like, it, it's, you're really just kind of with this girl through her di- many different forms, um, like, kind of finding her way. It's like, it's like, com- it's like a coming of age story for, like, a witch or something, you know? Do you know what I think really changed the tone of this movie immensely and kind of took me out of where I kind of wanted it to be was the music, which was, mm. um, um, what was it called? It it's was, very classical. Well, it was, I mean, straight up, uh, what's his name? You know, famous violin composer. I'm blanking oh. on his name right now. I'll um, figure it out. Oh, my God. Uh, Mark Bradshaw? No, no. Um, it says the music's by Mark Bradshaw. No, but there were there was specifically at least at one time in the movie, and then the rest of the music was highly <clears throat> inf- influenced by, um, oh, my God, why am I blanking? on his name right now i'm so sorry uh, well, what, what do you not like about what he does or what the music no it's like? not the, i don't dislike the music but in the context of this movie it just didn't feel like it it was changing the tone for me in a way that took me out of where i wanted it to be which was i wanted it to be a little darker i wanted it to feel a little bit more arvo part thank you jamie <laughs> mm. i was i could not i don't know it was one of those things you know anyway arvo part did compose at least one piece of music in this movie and then the rest of the music was very much in the style of Arvo Part. Mm, um, okay. But um but yeah, it was just a little bit too um like positive feeling for me, you know, and I wanted it to mm. be a little bit more ominous. Like it just took away from the ominous aspects of the visual elements of the movie. And if you were to take that music out and I definitely I could I was telling myself this, I remember during certain scenes, I was like, without this music, this m- moment would feel so much more like what it looks like and seems like it should feel like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But the music, which was clearly like a very intentional, dis- maybe choice, but for me, not the right choice. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, it just took me out of that um, that mood that I wanted to be in with this movie and why I um, entered into this movie in the beginning. Like where you feel you and en- where we feel that we go in the movie, the witch is where this movie could have gone, but it just didn't go there because of the music for me. Yeah. I think the tone though is just kind of going in a different direction than it's hard to not compare this to the witch, but like, uh, I think the witch is, it, it's just, it is a darker story. I think in the witch, like it, it's, it, it like its tone is far more sinister and twisted and kind of like um you know there's not a lot of sympathy to be had for <laughs> for well, the dark force maybe, i don't know it's i think that the end of the witch is up for debate <clears throat> to a degree you know in a weird well, sure. way but i but guess sh- this film to me felt almost like you're kind of um you know, you're with this young girl who uh, is, you know... Sort become... of a victim? Yeah, but she... Oh. You're... I feel like you're you're sympathizing with her, and, and she, you know, she's like... You, yeah. Uh, you're... We're with her, and... <coughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. Like, to me, it felt... I, I hear you on the music, because I think there was maybe too much of it. I didn't mind yes. what it was. Um, mm-hmm. because there were, there were times that I think it was like adding something for me, um, specifically what, 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 okay. I'll say what I loved even far more than the music was the, uh, voiceover and the way they did it. Mm. It was like this very up close, 
like someone whispering into a microphone, like almost ASMR like mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. voiceover for mm-hmm. uh, the, the lead character, which we haven't even mentioned, but she can't speak. So the lead character, she can't speak. And so you're you're only kind of getting her thoughts through this um, voiceover that's present through much of the film. Um, where she's like kind of discussing things that are happening around her, but like also in a kind of abstract and poetic way, way at times. But man, the way that that was done, I thought was spectacular because I think if it was just like a standard vocal booth sounding thing, it would have totally shifted the mood for what it like gave, which was it just like gave like um, an intimacy. Yeah, an intimacy. Like you, you feel like you're in her head with her because of that. And it just, like, gave a weight, even, to what she was saying. Um, and I just feel like it ele- it really elevated the film. <laughs> uh, that one simple choice of just, like, having this kind of, like... <laughs> you know, like, there was this pattern to it all that I was just falling in love with. Um, visually, of course, it's great, too. Like, I thought... Um, I thought just, like, the cinematography in general was amazing. But also mm. some certain effects... I don't really want to get into without spoilers, uh, so we'll talk about them later. But there was like some certain key effects that happened multiple t- times in this film uh, mm. that I thought were really well done, and um, they they were creepy and kind of like disturbing. Um, You're gonna and, have to remind me of that. I, I mean, I'll 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 talk more specifically yeah. later. But it it's like you know it's kind of like the body horror element that happens a few times throughout the film. Um, yeah. Oh, I. Oh, those parts. Yeah, I thought that like, was really cool. Some of that was Loved practical, that. and that was. Oh yeah. Yeah. Totally. I mean, some of it, of course, was not. Like there were certain parts of it that were not. But uh, I mean, I think overall, that the overall feels... look of it felt practical, yeah, and yeah. that's what matters. Yeah. yeah, and most of it was practical for sure. And and mm-hmm. keeping that um, grounded for me was like it really elevated those scenes to just be like wild to witness. I will say though, I felt that the, uh, the um, makeup for the witch herself, and I hope this is not a spoiler. There was something for me about that that was lacking. I don't know what it was. I'm it totally didn't with you on feel, that. Yeah. There was something that didn't quite feel like quite right on that one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jamie just what commented. What was up with that? Uh, Jamie just commented. Was it me or did the wolf eater us? Uh, have a Freddy Krueger look to her. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, partially that, but something about it just didn't look real. Like, it just, I mean, yeah. uh, it could have been more real, you know what I mean? It just felt a little, neither, it just didn't seem scary or something like that. Like, and I wanted it to be scarier or like a little more grotesque, maybe. Yeah, I liked what but they I were going for. I feel like you could for. see her, maybe they were going for, like, you could sort of see her very, like, human face through the makeup. Yeah. She just looked like a woman to me, you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't get past the look of her actual face, which was, to me, just a woman. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And I felt that that was not quite what I wanted it to be. You know what I mean? Like, in The Witch, we get a really intense, like, version of a witch when she's at her most grotesque, right? Oh, my God, yeah. I mean, The Witch in The which Witch I love. is just crazy. But, <laughs> right. like... Well, in her... She has various forms, but... I actually thought when the film grotesque. began that... Um, when we saw that witch and, and her makeup that she was maybe not going to play like a large role in the film because it it didn't read to me as like uh, the makeup of like a lead. You yeah, know. it just felt a bit sort of less than. It felt a bit of like <laughs> something that maybe should have been, I don't know, because she's such a prevalent part of the film, you know? I don't know. That it seems like... But then I, at the same time, then I was also wondering, like, as she continued to remain prevalent in the film, I was like, well, but then again, maybe, like, they were just having issues with how long it was going to take to get this person in this insane makeup every time mm. they had to shoot all these scenes with her. I mean, not like it's an excuse, but I just, I wonder if that was maybe part of the decision where it was like, maybe they wanted to push that further, but it would have added, like, you know, eight more hours to the makeup department. To, like, that would have been worth it. That I mean, it would have been worth it. it. I, I would have loved that. I feel like that. Those, those kind of details of what to me really make or break a mo- you know sort of push the movie over the edge or not you know what i mean and to me that was like a big sort of negative you know what i mean because it was an important role and for it to not pull you in in that way to like kind of fall short just felt like that really it made it not quite as immersive for me yeah other parts of her look were cool though like i thought uh the 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 kind of nail that her nails and like how oh, I like the gets nails. passed on to the yeah I love that the, that the, was cool like her hands look crazy I think the hair actually looks pretty cool too like the, it was all working for you minus like the facial makeup which was just a little one note like I just feel like it, 
I don't know. Yeah, I think it was just one note. I think what Jamie's saying, same ba- burn patterns as Freddy Krueger. Maybe, but Freddy Krueger's makeup is probably, like, a lot better than hers. Mm. You know what I mean? I have you always kind was? of felt like Freddy Krueger's not, like, the coolest looking. Uh, oh, my God. Me. I love Freddy. Well, I've always thought Freddy Krueger was, like, one of the cooler villains of the, t- the 80s. Like, you know, during my childhood, that was one of the most iconic sort of... Mm-hmm. But I don't know if his makeup look mu- much, looks much better than the makeup in this film. Well, I don't know. I kind of, maybe. But just something about her didn't feel like it was disguising her enough or something like that. Or, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It didn't transform her enough. Yeah. She wasn't, it didn't feel transformative. You know what I mean? I guess it but, does look you know. better. I'm looking at pictures of Freddy Krueger. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's something like you could see too much of her face or something like that in this. It gives her too much of like a... Well, I, I like that she could emote, though, because I think that was kind of important for Yes, yes, role. of course. Like, because I do... I could see another world where if you put too much on, you wouldn't really get what she's giving like her no i think you could though because it's in the eyes you know what i mean yeah i you got it good acting you see it and it's subtle you know what i mean like the subtlety of expression in the eyes reads through Mm -hmm. i think it can i think it can transcend like too much you know but it just i just didn't feel like we were you know i don't know yeah i already said um yeah and just to kind of touch on some of the themes too uh again i won't get into spoilers or anything but i just i liked how it kind of um, subverted my expectations. Like, again, I didn't really know much about the movie going into it, but I liked that it kind of just, be- it became, like, she kind of goes through these different, it was like, there's these kind of vignettes that happen in a way in the film. And each mm-hmm. one kind of was like, in some way, maybe like something that she's learning about um, the world or learning about herself or, right. you know, like there, there was these kind of, um, I just feel like the way that it incorporated quite human themes in, uh, from kind of the perspective of like an outsider coming into it, like a witch coming into these human themes, um, led to some pretty interesting sequences. And I'll call those out more specifically later. But like, I thought that was a really big um, draw for me. Was like seeing. I just feel like I, I don't I can't remember a time that I've seen a story about a witch where it's kind of like you get you are like empathizing with her as like this outsider who's like just trying to kind of get by in a way you know it's kind of like the classic story of, of an, like an outsider story but what if the outsider was a witch you know and I thought that was actually a really interesting and, and um, brilliant twist on it. I think that. Um... I would agree for the most part, other th- except for that. I don't, I think that what it was, was you're seeing this person experience like the most intimate kind of compassion or like empathy for <laughs> these different characters that she inhabits as a shapeshifter, mm-hmm. but not really even as a witch, but as just a complete like inexperienced person who was raised in a cave. Oh, sorry. Right. I don't know if I'm. Oops. No, no. I... Basically, it's like a baby going into the bodies of these different beings, and for the first time, seeing the world yeah. through yeah. these different eyes. And like that's interesting because what would that be like for a person to not have the like sort of social um, layering and impositions, you know, embedded within their psyche at that like before going into those kinds of realms. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> What are you doing? Uh oh. Okay. You want to say hi to Dominic? You can say hi. Hi, Ethan. Hello. How's it going? He can't hear you. Oh yeah. Dominic. Dominic's saying hi to you. Hi, Ethan. How's it going? Hi. I'm watching Transformers. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. (laughs) Have fun. Do you know how to sing the song? Transformers. Robots in the skies, mother meets the eye, Autobots face, battle to destroy the evil foods to sell, and the Septicons. <laughs> nice, cool. I haven't seen it. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Want to go finish the movie? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Gotta get back to the show. Gotta get back to the show. Uh-oh. Nice Uh-oh. seeing you. It's all good. Uh-oh, 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 hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. 
brief intermission for a second, everyone watching. Uh, Ethan has made his uh, his totally tell me debut. <laughs> he's absolutely adorable. Yeah, he's he's a little. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> he wants his. Th- Josh, uh, Josh, he's not supposed to be watching Transformers right now. He's supposed to be watching Ghostbusters too. <laughs> oh, you you've assigned him films. <laughs> no, that was what the, him and Anton were planning on doing when we were doing our show. They were like, "We're gonna watch Ghostbusters too, and we're gonna make popcorn." And Ethan's really excited about it. And he took a nap today. And the first thing he said when he woke up was he was like, "I'm gonna watch Ghostbusters too and make popcorn with Daddy." <laughs> it was like I heard. I know that's good. Josh commented, uh, he wants you guys to review Transformers instead. <laughs> yeah, well, no. But I, yeah. He's really into just the 1980s, sick, like, music, the music, musical intro to the show. Mm. He just loves that song, but he yeah. doesn't watch the show. He just likes the intros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, should we, should we get maybe to spoilers, or was there anything else that you want to discuss about the film? Uh, no, let's get into it. Okay. So. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put up a little spoiler sign on, on, uh, for the video listeners, but for, or for the video watchers, but for the audio listeners, if you, uh, care about spoilers, uh, you should probably not listen anymore, um, cause we're going to discuss any and all things about the film. Um, but I would say, you know, before you go, I think it's great and I recommend it. Like, I think people should definitely check out this film. I think it like, it's just, it's vibey and, and interesting and unique uh, and yeah, I think like if you're a fan of, if you're a fan of kind of these more, um, uh, like artistic kind of horror films, I feel like people call them that, but like they're really just, I think great stories that happen to take, uh, themes of horror into consideration. <clears throat> if you're into that kind of stuff, like this is another, this is one, I think one of the better ones in that subgenre. Mm-hmm. Um, my throat's getting scratchy, so I'm gonna have to I hear that. take a little more I've break. I've been here. there. I myself have been there. <coughs> take that Anyways, uh, mm-hmm. so we are gonna talk spoilers, so feel free to uh, tune out if you need to. So, so yeah, I think like I guess what I was going to mention more specifically about the practical effects that I really loved in this film was um, when she or when both her and the and her like mother witch figure um, take like open up their chest hole (laughs) and then Mm -hmm. like after upon murdering someone uh she will like grab their innards and like stuff them into this hole in her chest and like yeah that was just that was so fucking cool i thought like conceptually i thought that was awesome i don't even is that like is that part of some sort of witch rooted in some tradition because i've never heard about that but i mean i wouldn't be surprised if there was something to that effect i mean well, if, no, I not that I know of. Yeah, not that I know of. Well, even if it, I mean, whether it was or not, like I just that was but it very well could have. Yeah, yeah, that was like such a unique visual. Uh, yeah, I love. Super yeah, I really memorable like that. and like really well, just really well done. Executed. Yeah, like not only the effect but also the acting. Like I thought her performance of like, you know, like seeing her just like, ugh, like she's like pushing these innards in. I'm just like, oh man, this is like. It's that was like the most horrific parts to me was just uh, the kind of body horror element of it. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. That was cool. And, I liked that, and then I, I love that that kind of is the way that you then uh, like that's how she kind of transforms into these people is she ta- she takes their innards and then like becomes them. So I guess we should kind of like maybe a, a quick little summary here. Like she. Um, the main character of this film, in the very beginning of the of the film, is a is a baby, and uh, her mom is greeted by this witch who comes greeted <laughs> visited. visited by this condemned witch. by right. cursed by is <laughs> cursed by this witch who visited who visits her and um, puts a mark on her on her baby and and the baby becomes a mute and uh, the baby is like kind comes of con- mute uh-huh. uh huh yeah. Um, and the baby is kind of then destined, I guess, to become, uh... Cursed, too. Yeah. Well, she was going to take the baby right then, but then oh, the right. mother pleaded and bargained with the witch and said, please, let me take, let me take care of her until her 16th birthday. 
and then I'll give her to you then, and she'll be, you know, like more useful to you as a sixteen-year-old. Right. Yeah. She wanted those years with her with her daughter. The witch somehow. The reason that I think she marks the child with blood is that that is her way of ensuring that she will be able to collect the child, the girl, when she's sixteen. Totally. Yeah. Which was gr- like that opening scene. I was just like, "Damn, I'm so in!" <laughs> like it was just right. immediately grabbed me. Um, and then it kind of flashes forward um, to after that girl becomes sixteen. She she's been living in a cave. The mom kind of like keeps her sheltered from ever knowing what's outside. I I guess it like presumably to help keep her uh from the witch that will inevitably... the mom thinks that by keeping her in the cave she's going to protect her from being kidnapped by the witch when she's 16 but right. you know which is unsuccessful the witch takes her uh and all it does is keep her from having any experience in the world so she's totally just um completely naive to society and yeah. she has no experience she has no interaction with anything outside of that cave and her own mother having you know raised her intermittently yeah i also love that sequence where the witch temporarily takes the form of her mom after she kills her mom and right like, guides her out of the cave as her mom but like is the witch i thought that was really really cool and i think at that point it was still unclear to me that like the innards meant that that's like how they were shape shifting she so she's like yeah. pulling out these innards and like she's pulling out the mom's innards to re-become her witch form um but wait do we actually see oh do we see her pull the mom's innards out i forgot so yeah behind a rock well she kills the mom behind the rock she takes her form but we don't see what she does to take her form at that time she just like comes out from behind the rock and she's the mom but like we kind of know she's the witch uh and then she takes the daughter out and then like as they're walking in this field she's like pulling the mom's innards out of her chest to like re-become her witch form that sequence to uh, me was oh. like, I loved that. Okay. So she's able, I forgot, she's able to transform back into her witch form. By pulling if she out. she removes the, okay. Yeah. Which so, the daughter does too at a certain point in the film too. She like removes the innards of um, yeah. the first woman that she becomes, I believe. She removes her innards to re-become the, like her standard form, I guess. Um, just to clarify to people. So the witch does come back. When the girl is 16, despite the mother's efforts to protect her from the witch and defy the pact that she had made with the witch to give it to her when she was 16, the mother thought she could somehow get out of that deal that she made, but she does not, she's not able to, you know, hide from the witch. The witch knows what's going on, and the witch comes, gets the child at 16, and as a shapeshifter takes her mother's form and lures the girl out of the cave. So I think that it's true that while she was in the cave, she was in a way protected from the witch. The witch had to lure her out of the cave in order to sort of collect her. Isn't that right? Yeah, I guess so. Um, That's not clear to me why she was like protected in that cave though. Well, it didn't seem like she was at all because the witch just like waltzed in and like in a form of what was it like a, it was like a vulture oh, 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 or something. Oh yeah, she she's like disguised as a, as a Not bird a, of a vulture. A hawk yeah. Yeah, maybe it's a hawk. Or eagle. That was something. <laughs> but still, well, what I mean though is that she's not able to like do, or maybe she never was intending to do harm to the daughter. Well, the question is, why did she want the daughter? Did she want companionship? <laughs> was she? And here's the question I was going to ask that I kind of forgot. Why? And I know the movie explained this. What how, what was the witch's backstory that turned every that turned the girl into a witch the original witch the burn victim basically I know she got burned, that's what her whole makeup is is like she's a burn victim. Uh huh. Why? What happened to her? <laughs> I forgot. Do you? Uh, remember I guess I'm not. I, I, I'm not remembering her backstory necessarily, but I think she. I think she was abused by a husband, maybe or. Um. Yeah. Well, there is that one section. Ex- yeah. She. I'm forgetting. <laughs> I forget her backstory, but I think, like, what she was... I mean, she kind of... She wants to have her as... as Like, as, yeah, it's companionship, but I think she also wants that, like, mother-daughter relationship that she's, like... Ob- she, I think she's also, like, observing this, you know, through... Um, like in She the- was deprived of something in her life before she became the witch, right? It was like... And then how did she become the witch? Uh, Josh is filling in the gaps here, and he says she was lonely because they took all the men to war, and she had no one to marry. 
Uh huh. But then, and also, so she never had children, I guess. But then, how she did never... she become the witch? She was visited by something, and she obviously became the witch. How did that? I forgot. She's visited by something. I'm not remembering that part. Jamie said, in a weird way, the witch was her, the girl's liberator. Yes, yeah. totally. And kind like of adoptive, she... adoptive parent. You know, like it, it kind of even gets into that too. I think where it kind well, of. The... The witch what? says, like, you think I'm your mother, I'm not your mother. But what's interesting is that she gives her the ability to experience life in a way that is, in a way, like, transcendent beyond any normal human being. So she's able to not just be freed from the cave, but she's also be freed from the cage or cave of one's own body and skin. Mm -hmm. She's able to, like, go and experience the world through through a man, through a woman, through a child, through an animal, mm -hmm. and see all the ways in which firsthand how they're treated differently and the different sort of powers that are imbued within those different bodies, right? So that's kind of an interesting perspective. Yeah. Like in an unbi I guess in, there's an unbiased quality to that, to being able to experience the body of these different figures in a society firsthand. Yeah. It's like and that kind of is the interesting voice of the movie, in my in my opinion. Which, by the way, is quite similar to Poor Things, I will say. Oh, yeah, no, I was thinking that earlier, like how... The, the thing about Poor Things that I think is different, though, is, I mean, obviously there's a lot of differences, but it's it's the, the fetus mind is in, implanted into the body of a grown woman. Yet, but this child's mind is still, like, there's a lot of ability to... There's language, you know what I mean, that's part of all the already like born nature of the the being that's in the body of the adult like in poor things so yeah, and you're I mean, always seeing it I'm not saying they're the exact experience. same story but just like no, the vague concept of right, like that concept woman of going with in... very little knowledge of the outside world like she gets thrown out into the world you know like it's a classic well, like, story but like not know. really no I think that the the idea of this young mind undeveloped mind being implanted into the body of a developed physical person is but in this that's situation, not that common. In this situation, it's not just undeveloped, though. I would say, I mean, she's cursed, right? Like, she can't feel the things, or at least she thinks in the beginning that she can't feel the things that, like, humans can feel, you know? like I, Oh, is that true? I didn't know that. Well, it's oh, I thought it was... When she was talking about uh, another one of my favorite sequences was when she first shapeshifts into that, um, the girl from the oh. village, um, who oh. just had her baby and then she like comes in, kills her. And then she like becomes her for a bit in that section. Um, in her voiceover, she's talking about like, you know, uh, how she like watches other people cry and she wonders like how they do that. Like, how can you, how can you like, actually cry like that and then she's like trying to kind of learn the mannerisms of what it would right. be like to cry or to laugh do you remember that part because it was incredible like yeah, i thought yes of course but it, i just like, i think that she, she's not here, unable i thought that like at first at first she thought that she would be unable but of course well, i mean we learn as the movie goes on that she is able to feel these things but i think at that time she I took it as, and maybe I just was assuming this because I don't really know much about the lore, I guess. <clears throat> but I, th I was kind of taking it to mean that, like, being cursed by a witch maybe, like, robbed her of what she could feel, you know, emotionally. And she had to, like, relearn how to kind of feel these things. Um, well, I think that she never felt them before to begin with because she was locked in a fucking cave her entire life. So she had no interaction <laughs> with other human beings to experience such feelings. I think the witch didn't curse her. The witch merely turned her into a witch with these powers of the ability to shapeshift. And basically, I guess she was in a way tied to this woman somehow or maybe not. It was like she set her free because she wasn't like doing or bending to the will of the witch, I guess. Right. The witch like thought she was going to have this child and that they were going to somehow that she was going to somehow work for her, do something for her. I don't know what. But when she wasn't like complying with the woman, the witch, she just like said to hell with it kind of thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. Let let the girl do her thing. But I think that she's learning how to experience the world for the first time because she never had been outside of the cave. So she's going to these scenarios that she has no idea, like 
the concept of like what it means to have a baby. I mean, I don't even th- know if she knew about having mm-hmm. children. You no, know she I mean? doesn't. So yeah, because she watches because, someone give birth and is very confused as how that's even possible. Yeah, maybe it's a commentary on that. We learn how to experience emotion socially. You know what I mean? Throughout our lives, very like much that, so. Yeah, and I love that's, that. That maybe emotion. Maybe the commentary is that emotions are something that is learned. But I guess I was taking it like I think we're we're getting at the same thing and like we got the same <laughs> end result from it. But I took it that like I thought that her being a witch robbed her of her ability to feel these things. Uh, but Jamie is saying in the chat that doesn't necessarily mean that she wasn't endowed with the ability to cry a remote or emote. Um, there were no environmental stimuli such as uh, interactions with people to bring right. it out. But see, I guess, what I'm saying. but what I don't understand is like, but she had interactions with her real mother for 16 years, yeah. right? Like, wouldn't but, her real mother have been crying and like, or laughing or whatever, like feeling something and like, that's you true. learn that as a kid. So I think that's why well, I was thinking yeah. maybe like, is she unable to because she's, uh, you know, cursed by a witch and then becomes a witch? <clears throat> well, uh, who knows what the interactions and what the things her mother told her were growing up. Like, maybe her mother, you know, sheltered her from the world so much that she just didn't even know, like, I don't know what yeah. was out there. But I think being in the scenario of this woman who had just had given birth to a child and knowing how to act and behave in that situation was completely new to her. So, like, she probably had to learn, you know, how to be in that situation mm-hmm. because... She, I mean, it was just, just imagine, like, imagine that you've never seen anything outside the walls of a cave for 16 years of your life. Like, that would just be a complete shock to the system. Yeah. Yes, you might have had interactions with one single person, but that's just in and of itself something so extreme that you can't even possibly imagine, like, how that would affect your behavior and your ability to emote. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. In any specific situation, because it's just all brand new. So maybe, yeah, she was probably like, oh, okay, this is how it's done. Like a baby does. A baby uh, imitates. And this is something I've observed as a parent. It's like you see a child and they're watching you at how you're reacting to things. And then they start copying you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really interesting. I mean, that's. Um, yeah, it's totally. Think- and she, that's exactly what she does. Like, I love the part where you see her alone, like practicing how she's going to, like, pretend to laugh next time that all the girls are laughing and then, like, cuts back to them all laughing and then she's just, like, in the background going, like, ah, ha, 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 like, doing her, like, pretend fake laugh. It was so right. good. I just, I love that but the, sequence. Um, but when she becomes a child, I think that that's the first time she's really experiencing things in a natural way mm-hmm. because she kind of, is that in that phase of life in a way you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. that she hadn't really experienced she she passed that stage physically but she didn't get to experience that emotionally right right? and so maybe that was the thing that in an i don't know well i just don't know but i think that by the by the time that she she's shape-shifted into the body of a young girl she's actually like genuinely experiencing joy and you know yeah yeah well i think as yeah yeah well as it goes on I think it becomes more and more clear that um, she actually is feeling these things. Like, she's not just pretending to feel... She's not just, like, imitating what it might be like to cry or or laugh. But, you know, as the film goes on, it becomes genuine, for sure. Like, um, you know, in the kind of final section, in one of her... Fi- or, I guess it is her final form. Um, I mean, she... she marries and and becomes pregnant and i think genuinely falls in love and i think like that all felt very uh genuine for sure mm-hmm. 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 um and then of course yeah. in the very end um the witch her like witch mother comes back and murders her her husband and uh oh, curses yeah. her own child uh again in a similar oh. way in the beginning Oh, um, is that I forgot that. <laughs> like the <laughs> final the final sequence is that the witch mother kind of like comes back uh to not only kill her husband but then um takes her baby and then does the same thing like, you know, like cuts cuts a little thing on their throat and then they stop crying. So now her well, baby will be cursed as well. What's interesting about the witch mother or mother, the witch who has spawned these other witches in the movie is that she kind of tell, she seems to think that 
the girl is going to venture out into the world and try to inhabit these different forms and like somehow survive amongst the people and that it's not going to work for her because that she had tried it herself and it didn't work for her. Mm -hmm. And that's why she's like this outcast witch. Um, but somehow the, our main protagonist does succeed right. in doing it. And I think she but, becomes, the mother becomes kind of jealous of that and Yeah, spiteful. why is she, but why is she, un, is it because she's unable to experience like love? I think, is that what it comes down to is that she's, she feels that she's been robbed of the ability to have love in her life or what? Well, I think that is what she thinks, but I think what's interesting also in the final uh, scene is that the the mother the 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 mother witch <laughs> um, cries and so I think that like for the first time she actually like, that's a breakthrough yeah so I think <clears throat> in Maybe a way this girl does do by something going for through all this I think it's kind of insinuating that through watching her you know surrogate her daughter <laughs> yeah. um, go through these emotions it actually like did affect her awakens to the point emotions. but of course then she uh the the daughter she continues kills. the cycle well the daughter kills the witch in the end she kills her own mother <laughs> wait which daughter the main girl the main, the main girl mother? yeah like she she kills she kills the the, the one the creator witch. her mom yeah or like her kind of it's not her mother. mom i know but like you know mother figure which she kills her creator Right. I would call her. Yeah. Like, but she's kind of like a parental figure. Especially wait, so the... does that make her condemned to the cycle of hate that her is the well, thing that uh, uh, enchains the creator herself? I mean, yeah. The I fact think that that's... she is now. Well, but okay, wait. The main, so the protagonist, she has a daughter. Mm. The daughter survives, right? Daughter survives, but is cursed by the mother or the, uh, the witch. Not witch. cursed, but she is a witch, or she has become the witch, a witch herself. Yes, but the the witch, the the mother witch. Uh, oh, like, like did that mark does, thing on yeah, her? Yeah, puts the mark on her. Meaning, like it's going to be her child too, or something like that. And some that's something. Well, like I thought that's what what isn't that what makes you a witch? Oh yeah, so giving her the mark. The then was then she be gets a witch. the nails. Then she gets the she nails. She gets the nails. She becomes mute. Like she used to cry, and then she stops crying. So, like, okay, I think that's so... her cursing the kid to become a witch or whatever. But then the kid may not have a... But the, since the witch gets killed, the main creator witch gets killed, mm -hmm. that child has a chance at life, <laughs> in a way. I guess I don't know. I don't know how much of a... I don't really know what that means. Like, because... Yeah, I don't know. I kind of forgot. <laughs> well, no, no. I mean, they also don't tell you. I'm saying, like, I think it's no, open know. to interpretation as to whether that curse would then continue despite her being dead or would it lift because she's dead like i, I we, we don't really know well the main protagonist <clears throat> also survives the witch right survives the bye jamie jamie's gotta go um thanks for your input yeah. um the main witch has to uh well so she dies but then the other two both survive her right um what do you the mean? The granddaughter and the daughter. Well, yes, like, yeah, they're both alive, yeah. So they both are alive by the end of the movie. Like, they don't die. No. So maybe there's a chance to sort of, yeah, like, recreate the uh, cycle. Not cycle, but to break the chains of the cycle mm -hmm. and be able to be a witch, but with compassion and empathy and, like, the ability to love. I don't know. I guess we'll find out and you won't be alone, Part too. two. <laughs> And yeah, I think together. I think that's just like kind of where they leave things is for you to. Oh no, they're that, gonna we're know? gonna find out in the Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Home Alone, exactly. Home the, Alone, the, too. the '90s classic. Um, yeah, all right, any final thoughts on on the film before we wrap it up here? Yeah, I liked it, but I didn't love it because I just felt that the music took me out of it, the vibe. But other than that, it was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and <laughs> I wish they used different music. Yeah, I also loved it. I uh, I think it like, I think there were times when I was like less into it in the latter half. I will say like it it got a little, um, I don't know. I, I there was just times where I wasn't as hooked. But overall, mm -hmm. I thought that it was like yeah, I thought it was really good. Like I would definitely recommend this movie. And and it surprised me. Like I thought there were elements to it that were. Um, yeah, it's like really exciting and, and really well done. And 
Um, and seeing his other film of an age, like, it just makes me excited to just, like, watch this director do whatever he's going to do. I felt, like, a similar way about of an age where it was, like, you know, it's not, like, a perfect film or anything, but, like, it's very good, you know? I would totally... I would also, by the way, recommend his other film, Of an Age. So if you saw You Won't Be Alone, watch that. Bryce says, You Won't Be Alone, Lost in New York. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the exactly. sequel. <laughs> That's it, Bryce. You got it. Yeah, she's going to she's gonna go to New York after this. And uh, she's going to hit the big city, figure out what it's like to live in the big city as a witch. She's going to go stay at Trump Towers. <laughs> <laughs> Trump, Donald Trump's going to make a cameo in that movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right. Well. <laughs> anyways, yeah. Pretty fun. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else to report? No. I think, um, you know, just I'll I'll plug it again that uh, my short film, He Won't Belong, is going to uh, have its online premiere uh, on February 26th. Uh, it'll be the featured short of the week on filmshortage.com. So you should definitely watch it. I mean, why not just watch it? You know, please God. I agree. I agree. Um, so check that out when it comes out and, uh, we'll be back again, of course, in two weeks. I think we've kind of talked behind the scenes about doing Priscilla. So, oh yeah, we're going to do that. So yeah. I really want to see that. Why don't we just say, Sophia Coppola movie. yeah, why don't we just say that, uh, that'll be the next episode is Priscilla the um, 2023 film from Sofia Coppola. So if you want to do your homework early, you can, if you want. Honestly, I probably won't be doing it until the day of. I like to procrastinate. Um, no, it's mainly because I like to be fresh. Fresh. <laughs> but, um, so that'll be our next episode. Again, we go live every other Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time um, on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. So you can catch us there. Otherwise, you can always listen later on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and everything else. So our next episode will be, um, let's see, what will be the date? It'll be March 3rd, so tune in then. And until then, mm -hmm. we will see you later. Bye. Bye. The words of the lady from your hot springs. Uh. <laughs>